Hey, everybody. So I am going to do uh, a response to Kelly Bear's top five tarot decks I couldn't live without, mostly because a friend of mine um, told me that they would stop talking to me if I didn't. Basically, I've been I've been pushed and shoved. I'm just kidding. Uh, you actually should check out this friend, um, Prism and Company. He has just started making videos. He's making a brilliant tarot deck. So check out Prism and Company on YouTube and the Prism Tarot on Instagram. So this is for you. This was not as hard to do as I thought it was going to be because I can never make up my mind about anything. And so actually I'll talk about what the hardest choice was uh, and it was really just sort of a, a weird thing. But um, I, I made the decision based on sort of how I read and what interests me and what makes me happy. And um, it's also based on my mood. So this could totally change, you know, next week. But let's start. I, there's no particular order to this at all. I would uh, be delighted with each of these were I stranded on a desert island. Although I don't know really what I would be reading about if I were, other than how to get the fuck off. Um, so, yeah. So the first one I have talked about many times as being one of my all-time favorite decks. Um, it has lived in this little silk bag uh, for almost... When did I get this? 2001... So, uh, 18 years? It's, it can vote now. Uh, this is the World Spirit Tarot. And uh, this is one of the sort of uh, original decks that, that featured uh, any kind of diversity of any, of any sort. This is the original edition. I have two copies of the original edition. I also have on the shelves behind me the new edition, which is uh, available. You can get it on Amazon, actually. You can get it through the author's sites, too. The I like both of them. I'm fond of the original. It's a little smaller. It's a little less glossy. But if you can't, get, although this is not hard to find and it's not super expensive, uh, you can you can get the new version. So let's just show you some cards. I love this sort of. It's linoleum block print. It's really rich colors. It um, it's just one of my favorite all-time decks, you know, and probably if I had to sort of say I were going to choose only one, it it would probably be this one. You know, nothing is perfect. There's a couple cards I don't love. I'm probably looking back on the uh, guidebook, I might think, oh, that's a little problematic, or oh, maybe, you know, that was a little appropriative. But honestly, in terms of representing the world, I think it did a pretty good job. And and by you know modern standards, even I think it's still one of the more representational decks in terms of ethnicity, uh, color, queerness, body type. Um, you know, and it's not just like there's a fat devil. It's like the the you know the body positive world card. Um, so I, I love this deck so much. It makes me so happy, and it's so pretty. I brought this to the Reader Studio. It's been out of, the, this edition has been out of print for a while, but um, I just wanted to reconnect with it. So I brought this to the Reader Studio, and uh, it, it proved to be pretty popular. And I use this pretty much all weekend. Um, I use the Tarot de saint Croix a lot, too, but I only got that like the last couple days. So I think I have a walkthrough of this deck. If not, they're out there. But it is it is just it is just one of the more successful um, Rider Waite Smith decks out there, and I, I kind of love. I don't kind of love it. I adore it. Um, so this version is out of print. It's still findable on Amazon for like forty bucks, if I'm not mistaken. But if you want the new version, actually, one of the least popular cards in this deck is the Sun with the sort of like really jacked baby. Uh, the new version does not suffer that same fate. There, to the magician and the sun are the only cards that are different in that deck. I'm not sure why they changed the magician, but um, where's the sun card? Oh, there he is. Yeah, actually, facially he looks a little like Pete Buttigieg. Um, so who knew? Anyway, that's the World Spirit Tarot. It is one of my all-time favorite decks. I adore it so much. Um, and uh, I had to... This is one of the few that I had to have backups of because I love it so much. Um, so that's the World Spirit. This is the back. The new. Well, let me show you. <clears throat> let 
why not? It's my video. I can do whatever I want. This is the new edition, um, and it's a little bit bigger. Uh, better box than the original one. Um, this is the new back, so it's not the same back. Doink. It's a little bit larger. Um, not substantially. It, it shuffles as well. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger. Uh, and the cardstock is slightly, slightly shinier. Um, but it's not the end of the world. And then the... Uh, let me show you the sun card. The coloration's a little darker. Again, you know, that happens with new printings of things. But it's... Um, it's still pretty great. And, you know, and if this is, like, the only version you can get, then... Um, you'll still, I promise, be happy with it. It really did do a good job. And I, I there aren't a lot of modern decks that, that I think have have done as well. And if, if, if not, like, this is not token diversity. You know, there's, there's a lot of different colors, including blue, uh, of the people in the deck. And um, it just, uh, body types and queerness and that, you know, again, I don't know of any deck that's done, that's done this better. Um, I think I'm still sort of judging. Oh, here's the new Sun card. So instead of the jacked baby, it's a little bit... It's better. This is a better Sun card for sure. <laughs> it's definitely a better Sun card. Uh, but I still love, you know, I love the original deck uh, so much. I'm just looking at this again. I'm, I'm going to show you the Magician too, which is the... Uh, the only different one. This one has a little bit more. I don't know why they changed it. This one has sort of like a um, uh, like a New Orleans vibe, like a uh, like a Cajun New Orleans voodoo vibe, which those things don't really go together. I don't know if they changed it because of copyright or whatever with the Llewellyn edition. I don't know, but I kind of wish they had kept the original um, magician. But I still like that one. And then the guidebook actually uh, really nice, and. Um, it's signed. And then Mary Kay Greer wrote a forward for it. And um, the World Spirit Tarot is so perfect to me. It's about it's about as good a deck as I own. It's probably the deck. <sighs> All right. Quick time always freezes on me when I'm doing videos this way. Let us move quickly then so that it does not get further pissed off at me. Um, this is going to be a nightmare to edit. All right. Next up is another one of my heart singy decks, and this should probably come as no surprise to anybody. This is Corte de Taroki by Anna Maria D'Onofrio. Again, just a deck that makes my heart sing. It's it's a pip deck. It is an unusual shape. It's not going to look that good on this video because the coloration is very subtle. The one thing I would say about this particular deck is I wish it were a little more saturated, but that's such a small thing. Uh, I love I love the sort of bookmark thinness. It has a very iconic feel to it. Um, it's just, if I get closer, is it better a little bit? Um, it just it just is so beautiful. I love it. It just it makes me smile and um, oh I'm happy when I see it. <laughs> I love it so much. I love to shuffle it. It's it's like a really, you know, someone actually mentioned in a video, in, in a response to a video, like, how do you shuffle this deck? I can't, you, you sort of have to like work with it and like, um, just like, just like sit on the couch and shuffle it while you're watching TV. But um, what I've really learned is you can't riffle shuffle it because there's just the cardstock is too thick. It feels very much like watercolor paper, but it's a little more substantial than that. Um, and you just kind of have to shuffle it. And then as you get used to it, um, it'll just start to like get easier to shuffle. And just like, hey, let's shuffle together. Um, but it's so good. Oh, look at like the cute... <laughs> hanged man oh i love it so much it just it's so it's not an it's not an old deck i mean i think it's from the 80s i'm looking at it and not showing you any of it um but it has the feel of of kind of a, an old-fashioned um renaissance deck it's an il manigello deck um it is a limited edition but i think it's not that limited like i'm pretty sure you can still get it from collect tarot um, I love this sun card with these, like, surprised bambinos. 
So this deck, just uh, the second I saw it, I fell in love. Astela, so pretty. Uh, I love it. I love this deck so much. Strength. This is my birth card, the chariot, or one of them. I'm a chariot tower. How about that? Love it. I love this deck. It makes me... It just makes me so happy that tarot is the thing that exists. I love this hermit. Hermit cards are ones that I always look for. I just love the... Um, proportions the angles there's just something about it that's so specific and beautiful i love it those two are probably always on my list and so then next i had to decide that the 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 uh, let's go to this one so i i would always have a straight up marseille in my collection uh if i were limited to five uh, I go back and forth between the marshmallow, between the noblet. Right now, I've chosen the dodal, um, which is straight up Marseille. It's a little bit large, well, it's substantially larger than the noblet, um, but it uh, it's a Marseille. It's actually it's a little bit quirky, quirkier in some ways with the line variation than the noblet. I like both of them very, very much. But uh, this one also shows up a little bit better on camera because it's larger, although it's harder to shuffle because it's larger. The CBD shows up a lot. The Tarot uh, Millennium, they, they have all made the rounds. This is the one that I'm choosing for today. Um, it's also the newest. But uh, I just like the sort of wonkiness of the faces. It, it feels very of its, of its time. And uh, so that... Is that um, Jean Dodal? I love it. I know that people think Marseille decks are ugly. I really used to too, and I just learned to love them. And and, and like a good relationship, uh, we've we've accepted we've accepted each other for our the bags under our eyes and our frumpy clothes. So that's the Dodal. That's a straight up Marseille. So the 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 like the really hard one was like do I pick something new because there's a lot of things that I would have included like the shadowscapes that I love uh, but I felt like if I was going to have a straight up Marseille I should have a straight up Rider Waite Smith because I learned I cut my teeth that way and I still read with Rider Waite Smith even though it's I don't you know exclusively read that way um, and so I was like okay well then if I'm going to do that which one do I pick I have like a reproduction of the Pam A which I'm principally using uh, or do I just be creative and like not do that? Like let's let's be like the sexy modern reader that I am and like not pick a Rider Waite Smith. But I had to, and so the one that I chose ultimately was the University Books uh, edition. And the reason I chose this is for a couple of reasons. One, it it's funky. It's so sixties seventies coloration. It's not even funny. Um, it is so. I mean, it's like it's almost tacky, and it's. Uh, <laughs> it's color. It's like, what is going on? Oh, I love it though. You know, like, what is with these blues? It's like electric blues from hair. But um, I love it. I love one of the things that I've always loved about the Rider Waite Smith deck are its weirdnesses, are its imperfections, and this deck is definitely that. This is also the one that Frankie Albano based the Albano weight on and sort of his correction of it. It also has the pink onk on the back, which I love. This is the edition that uh, Rachel Pollock talks about being her first edition when she started reading in uh, 78 Degrees of Wisdom, and that, of course, made me had to have it. Uh, and it took many years for me to find an affordable version of it, but I finally did. And um, the cardstock is wafer thin. Like, it's just... Part of me wants to scan it and have it printed on better cardstock so that I don't damage this vintage one. Now, this is not a first edition. It's come in different editions over the years. The You don't really know because there's no date when this version was actually published, but um, that's that. So, I mean, oh my God. Like, the blue is so... Like, this deck is known for being really yellow. This version of this deck is blue. Um, come on. But it's so cool, and I love that sort of psychedelic realness of it. Um, so, yeah. There are different versions I could have chosen, but this is the one I ultimately decided 
that I would take. Another honorable mention uh, that almost took the spot was the uh, Grand Tarot uh, Baleen, which is another Pip deck. But because I already had two Pip decks, I figured I should pick two Pip decks, two Rider Waite Smith decks, and then something that's neither of those. And so my final pick was a deck that I was not expecting. It was a deck that I was not even looking for. And uh, it arrived at the right time in the right place for the right thing. And it's the Japaridza Tarot, which um, is out of print, but it's coming back into print as I understand it. Uh, it's a weird deck. It's not Rider Waite Smith or Thoth or Pip. It's its own animal. Um, this is the one card that I really don't like. It's the Emperor. It's it's called War. I've talked about this before. I kind of secretly hope that in the new edition that will at least be retitled. I don't, the image is fine. I just, I, you need the Emperor in Tarot. Uh, to me, you need it. Even if you don't like him, you still need it because he's still there impacting our lives. And he's not always the bad guy, you know? Sometimes we need that structure. So I wanted something to, in, to include something that just was not like anything else. Uh, and I thought about the Margareta Peterson. I thought about the Chimanette. Neither of those do I use as much as this one. This one is a deck that immediately I could tell we were going to have a special bond. I don't tend to anthropomorphize my decks, but this one reads really well for me. And um, the art is really, primarily really breathtaking and strange and delicious. And um, I got this at the Reader Studio my first year. It was an impulse buy. I had brought principally only Pip decks with me. And I needed something I learned quickly that had some visual language to it other than the the uh, pips because we weren't really reading we were using a lot of the images we weren't really reading in the way that I would normally read so I bought this uh actually I wanted the eight coins tattoo tarot and it was sold out uh at the tarot garden so I'm like well just give me this one whatever uh <laughs> and again as things tend to happen it turns out to be the right thing uh not wild about the back it just does not fit the rest of the deck but other than that, it's really, and that war card, it's such a beautiful deck. And I, I, when I found out it went out of print, I, you know, went through hell and high water to find a backup copy. And I did, I got one, but, uh, <laughs> it involved, it involved some work and, uh, it is coming back into print. I'm curious to see if they're going to make any changes to it. I really, really just don't even, you don't have to change the image US games. Please just change the title. Nino Japaridza, please. The title of the, the war. I, I have learned to interpret it in a way that is, suits my reading style, but I just, I wish it could just be the Emperor. I'm not a big fan of retitling Trumps. I know that they're mired in all kinds of dreck from our fucked up history, but I still, you know, even if we think about the Emperor as patriarchal, the patriarchy is still working on us, you know, just in the same way that the Pope is still working on us. You know, the, the idea of organized religion and systems, those, those things are still there, even if we don't like them, even if we want to move past them, they still impact us. We're not in that Aquarian world of not having leaders. Um, and, we, and, you know, we need to have that represented in tarot. So those are my five. That's the World Spirit, Corte de Taroki, the uh, Tarot de Marseille, in this case, the Dodal, Ryder Waite Smith, uh, in this case, the crazy, sexy 60s University Press, and then the Chapa Red Zatara. I hope this was fun. Uh, I hope you're doing well, and let's talk soon. Be good.